Well, it is that time of year again, and it's only the beginning of all October, and we only have one more uh, name left before we run out of names, and we have to go to our auxiliary list. So in this video, I'm going to discuss the, somewhat the history of the auxiliary list of the auxiliary list essentially so this is we're gonna first go to that this is uh, this was released earlier this year where they decided to remove the Greek alphabet uh, from the auxiliary list of hurricanes and we'll describe I'll we'll explain why they, they did it and why they chose the Greek alphabet in the first place so if you look at the history right here these are all these are the archives of all the all those name systems that have been named since the, they started naming them in 1950 and there are only two years where we've had to ever had to use the Greek alphabet. The first one was the hyperactive Atlantic hurricane season of 2005, right here. We ha uh, we had some of the well, we had now for a while we had the we had so basically in 2005 we had thir we had 31 depressions. Um, yeah, we had 31 depression. We had 31 tropical depressions. We had 28 total named storms. So we had 28 total named storms. We had 15 hurricanes, and we had seven major hurricanes. So, basically, the first ever time we used a Greek alphabet, uh, uh, basically a name in the Greek alphabet was in October. Was basically late October of 2005. Uh, yeah, basic. Yeah, October 2005. It was it designated Tropical Depression 25, and then strengthened into Tropical Storm Alpha later that day, where it made landfall at, in the Dominican Republic before being absor absorbed into, her, into, at that point, Hurricane Wilma, which had just made landfall in Florida. The first ever major hurricane uh, came, uh, to be in the Greek alphabet was Hurricane Beta, in uh, October, in, from, uh, which was from October 26th to October 31st, 2005. However, this major hurricane didn't necessarily cause, uh, uh, didn't was not is what didn't cause very much uh, enough damage to be retired. So, yeah, this is where it was. It was, it basically it made it strengthened to a major hurricane. It made landfall it, as a as a category two hurricane, and it rapidly weakened and dissipated. It caused about fifteen million dollars in damage across the uh, across Central America. So. There it is right there. We had Gamma, we had Delta, we had Epsilon, and we had Zeta. We only had six uh, named uh, named in the 20, uh, fi, two, that, sorry, 2005 assist, uh, 2000, and 2005. Now if we compare that to 2020, which is the second time we've had to do it, we've had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We had to use nine of them, and five of, and five of which became... Yeah, five of which became hurricanes. First, first hurricane we're going to really talk about, which is Hurricane Delta, which is this is it's this little thing right here. I'm gonna hold on. I'm gonna let me fix something real quick. Okay, this is Hurricane Delta right here. We have uh, we have hur yeah, this Hurricane Delta right here. We fi able to fix it, the the screen a little bit so I could show you what Hurricane Delta looks like at second peak. But before that. It actually, its meteorological history is quite, quite interesting to say at the very least. So, the Delta was actually the fastest ever to, uh, tropical cyclone to go from a tropical depression to a Category Four hurricane. It managed to do that in just 36 hours. It became, it first started off as a tropical depression, and then nine hours later, it was strengthened into a tropical storm, and then it, it continued, uh, and then it continued westward, and then rapidly. It didn't. I wouldn't consider this rapid intensification. I consider this ex explosive intensification. It became a Cat One hurricane 12 hours after being named. It became a Category Two, uh, two uh, nine hours after that. So it basically just jumped categories in t uh, two categories in 21 hours, and then it intensified, and then it intensified even further. It developed a small pinhole eye, which was not see could not be seen. And satellite radar, but it could be seen in microwave, you know, microwave radar. So that shows you how intense that was. It exploded. It became a Cat 3 hurricane. And then it became a Category 4 hurricane 20 minutes later. It was designated that when the hurricane hunters found that the winds had incre increased to 130 miles per hour. 
and then it strengthened further to a 145 mile per hour hurricane. So this hurricane essentially what it did was triple its strength in 24 hours and quadruple its strength in, in 36 hours and it eventually as eventually it did weaken considerably as small hurricanes while they too do tend to jump up in intensity by a ridiculous amount they sometimes also can uh, weaken at a ridiculous uh, a ridiculous amount as well this was this is delta at its peak intensity you can barely see the eye right there but there it is now it was a very tiny hurricane but it was an extremely powerful one as well uh, reaching winds of 145 miles per hour as just mentioned it would make landfall on the Yucatan Peninsula as a Category 2 hurricane with winds of, I believe, 110 miles per hour. So, hold on, I'm taking a look. Yeah, Category 2, it weakened some more over the Yucatan Peninsula to a Cat 1, and then it re-strengthened to a Category 3 hurricane later in the Gulf of Mexico. However, as it moved into colder waters, it weakened again to a, a hurricane with winds of 100 miles per hour before it made landfall near uh, Creole, uh, Louisiana. I'm not sure if I pronounced that right. I've, I'm sure I didn't, but yeah. Essentially, Delta reintensified. This is where this is what it looked like as it was reached its secondary peak of 120 miles per hour. Then, as it moved over colder waters, it made landfall. Interest interestingly, about 12 miles away from where Hurricane Laura made landfall, or, or uh, a month and a half earlier, six weeks earlier, to be exact. Next hurricane I want to look at is Hurricane Zeta, which also makes this list because of how it intensified and how strong it was when it made landfall in Louisiana. So this is the meteorological history right here. This was Zeta at its peak with winds of 115 miles per hour right here. So there it is. This is the meteorological history. It became a, it was a tropical wave, and then it became a, a tropical depression uh, 28 on October 24th, and then 12 hours later, it strengthened to Tropical Storm Zeta, and then it made landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula as a Category 1 hurricane. It weakened to a tropical storm at that point, and then, at, and then after it entered the Gulf of Mexico, it steadily intensified. It became a hurricane on October 26th, uh, and then it made, yeah, it became a hurricane. Sorry, I'm backtracking this made landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula with winds of 85 miles per hour, weakened to a tropical storm. It moved on shore and entered the Gulf of Mexico. Dry air did wrap around Zeta's, uh, the northern half of the circulation, and when it went into the southern Gulf, and that's uh, that's why it, it waited so long for it to really intensify again. It began to re-intensify again after that happened, and it, there was low shear and warm sea temperatures at that point. It and then there was an uh, and then yeah it became a hurricane uh, about two, uh, 440 miles away from New Orleans it the hurricane then accelerated due to a cold, uh, due to a cold front and an upper level low uh, an approaching upper level low and associated with uh, the cold front in the southern plains basically the cold front was pushing what it was doing Zeta was moving like this yeah Zeta was moving like uh, yeah yeah Zeta was moving like this the cold front was yeah, Zeta was moving in like this. Cold front was pushing through, and it caused it to accelerate. It caused it to accelerate uh, towards Louisiana. Well, while doing that, it still intensified as it was approaching Louisiana. It was going at a speed of 30 miles per hour. It eventually would make landfall near New Orleans with winds of 115 miles per hour and a pressure of 970. And it made landfall uh, uh, at. Coco Dyer, Louisiana. It passed. It, it it passed over New Orleans, and then it went into Southern Mississippi. So, this was another. This was another major hurricane with a Greek alphabet. Hurricane Beta was that in 2005, but it didn't do nearly as much as Delta or Zeta. Now we're going to go into to the the two hurricane uh, the two ba uh, bad hurricanes that really ca uh, really caused the Greek alphabet to be retired. First one was Hurricane Ada. And it was an extremely powerful Category 4 hurricane at, and with winds of 150 miles per hour. This is the satellite imagery of Ada as it was at its peak intensity approaching the shores of Nicaragua and Honduras. It, at first, it was, very, it was a very slow-moving system. It exploded in intensity over the Caribbean's ocean, uh, Caribbean Sea. I almost said Caribbean Ocean. 
It's not an ocean. The Atlantic's an ocean. The Caribbean's a sea. Please excuse me for that. And what it did was it exploded in intensity to 150 miles per hour. The NHC has actually designated this a 155 mile per hour hurricane because when the hurricane hunters were out there, they put they found winds of 150, but they didn't sample the strongest part of the storm yet. So they went operationally with 155. Uh, when it made land, it made landfall. Like yeah, this Washington Post actually reported that several meteorologists believed Ada actually strengthened to a Category 5 hurricane. Uh, it, then in the post analysis, they re recorded it was 150 miles per hour. So that was pretty. That's honestly pretty impressive. An eyewall replacement cycle began. Uh, began. To, uh, began. It was just. It literally just stalled just off the coast of Nicaragua before it eventually made land. Uh, eventually made landfall with winds of 140 miles per hour. A storm surge of 26 to 33 feet was reported at landfall. Put that in perspective, Hurricane Katrina's storm surge was 28 feet in Mississippi. This was a storm surge of 26 to 33 feet. That's that's absolutely nuts. Like wow, and it, I, it, I remember it caused a huge amount of damage in the, in the central in Central America. It rapidly weakened as it moved over Nicaragua, diminishing to a cat two three hours after landfall. It would eventually dissipate, and but but, well, it wouldn't dissipate exactly. It would first, it would then come out of Guatemala. It would basically go in a bunch of uh, air, like a bunch of like like squiggly squiggly lines. It would first, it would re-emerge in the Caribbean as a tropical storm, make landfall in Cuba, and then basically take a loop uh, across from Florida, restra briefly restrengthen to a hurricane, and then make landfall in uh, in northern Florida before eventually dissipating over the Atlantic Ocean. So, Hurricane Ada caused catastrophic damage in, in Nicaragua and Honduras, caused a lot of rainfall, huge amounts of storm surge of 33, 26 to 33 feet. That's honestly impressive. But, hurricane, uh, but unfortunately for that, Central America wasn't quite done, because literally two weeks later, Hurricane Iota uh, approached their shores. So... Hurricane Iota was the uh, was the first uh, was the last cat uh, sorry the last hurricane the last tropical system of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. It was also the strongest when it was first and uh, when it was first ca uh, came out. They first designated this as a Category Five hurricane with winds of 160 miles per hour. I still think it was a Category Five hurricane with winds of 160 miles per hour. However, in post uh, uh, the post analysis, they concluded that. It was 155 miles per hour, which it's their call, but I dispute that. But either way, 155 and 160 is does make makes zero difference whatsoever. Iota still caused catastrophic da damage, but what happened was on November 13th, it became Tropical Depression 31, it basically tying the 2005 with the most tropical depressions recorded in one season. It strengthened to Tropical Storm Iota. It struggled with wind shear a little bit. It then began to intensify at a very fast pace, just like a Delta, just like Ada, and now, uh, and just like Laura did, and now we have Iota, which is approaching this literally the exact same place that uh, that Ada just destroyed. So, yeah, it began rapid intensification over winds uh, over. So, excuse me, over warm waters late on November 14th, and convection started to wrap around the storm center. It became a hurricane on November 15th at, at 600, uh, sorry, 600 UTC or about 2 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time in the morning. It then became a Category 2 hurricane uh, 18 hours later. And then uh, hurricane hunters found a, they found a high uh, end Cat 3. Uh, sorry. It be, it, they discovered that it had become a major, major hurricane with a high end Category 3 making it one the first time the two major hurricanes were recorded in November, the other being Ada. Sorry, sorry, I don't know what just happened. They also found intense lightning in Iota's southwest eyewall, along with hail, which is extremely rare for a hurricane due to warm waters that are present in these storms. Let, let me just say this. If, if you see things like that in a hurricane, like... Generally, if you see lightning in a hurricane in a hurricane's eyewall, 
that means it is strengthening at a very quick pace. That means it's still strengthening. But if you see hail in the hurricane, that is, oh, that is absolutely bonkers. Like, that is something, like, that is something you never, you barely, you don't really see. That's a once-in-a-lifetime thing you see right there. Yeah, just 40 minutes later, Iota reached Category 4 intensity. And then it, it continued to intensify as a high-end Category 4 hurricane with winds of 155 miles per hour, pressure of 917 miles per hour. Operationally, the peak winds were estimated at 160 miles per hour, making Iota a Category 4 hurricane, which I agree with, especially considering that there was lightning and hail in this thing, especially considering that hurricane hunters were out there looking at, uh, with the recon, looking at this. However, a post, but then the NHC did a postseason analysis. They downgrade, they downgraded into a Category 5, sorry, downgrade from Cat 5 to Cat 4 due to some questionable SFMR readings produced by the reconnaissance flight, which honestly, that's their call. But at the same time, they... They, at the same time, no, not a lot of people know this, but when it came to Hurricane Dorian, they didn't upgrade it to a Category 5 hurricane uh, at, at, when, when the reconnaissance found flight level winds and SFMRs. They had two drop suns in there that had flight level, that had hur at winds at Category 5 hurricane. Yet when they did this with Hurricane Matthew in a postseason analysis, they found two analyses of 135 mile per hour flight level winds they went with 165 miles per hour so honestly the NHC like it's their call but they need to be more consistent when it comes to stuff like this I and I get it, it I get it, it was a cat 5 they kept it at a cat 5 for months but and this was this did weaken to a cat 4 when it made landfall but still I anyway I'm taking I'm spending too much time talking about this after peaking in intensity iota weakened somewhat as it crossed over the cold a uh, cold wake created by Hurricane Ada two weeks prior. Generally, what hurricanes do, like, they absorb a lot of the warmest water, and if another hurricane comes at that exact same spot, there's not very much left to go uh, to really share around. But Iota did make landfall in northeastern Nicaragua, pretty close to where Ada made landfall with winds of 145 miles per hour and a pressure of 921 millibars, 15 miles away from where Ada made landfall. This was the strongest hurricane ever to make landfall in Nicaragua in November. Iota then, like, it caused, I remember, Iota caused a, even more catastrophic damage. Like, Ada, pretty much, what, what happened with Ada was that it caused catastrophic damage. People were starting to prepare for, uh, repair for it. Then Iota came ashore and just absolutely just uh, caused a huge amount of, a uh, huge amount of devastation as well. So... Yeah, the preparations, the impact. Um, for IOTA, 84 people were uh, were killed. It cost 1.4 billion do uh, dollars in damage. I'm actually going to check what it was for Hurricane Ada. It was actually 8.3 uh, billion. So Ada, you know, yeah, Ada actually did the brunt of the damage because when IOTA made landfall, there was pretty much there was really nothing left for it to destroy. That's what. That's essentially what it did. When you have two back-to-back -back Category 4 hurricanes making landfall in pretty much the same spot, that's it basically makes the lands uninhabitable for for not just months, probably years. So, yeah, I remember after this, these two hurricanes caused pretty much a humanitarian crisis in Central America, and after this, a lot of a lot of people there started migrating uh, from. And Costa, from Costa Rica, Nicaragua, Honduras, uh, Guatemala, uh, they started uh, fr from that. They started coming to the, uh, started uh, m marching to the, not necessarily marching. They started heading to the United Mexican United States border after this, and it caused such a humanitarian crisis. And my heart, my thoughts and prayers go out to the people who were affected by these two hurricanes because this was historic in proportions, and. When you have two hurricanes like this going back to back with each other, like, oh my god, uh, oh my god, I can, I don't think anyone can imagine what it is like to go through two Category Four hurricanes ten days apart. I'm so, I'm sorry. I, I feel really sorry for, uh, uh, for everyone that was involved. And my heart's, my thought, my heart, my thoughts, and my prayers are out to everyone affected by these hurricanes. But anyway, 
for this reason alone, they decided to basically remove the Greek alf uh, They decided to remove the Greek alphabet from used hurricane names because of these two hurricanes right there, hurricanes Ada and Iota. They actually got reti they originally got retired uh, from the uh, in tw the 2021 conference. They actually got retired, and then they decided a couple about a month later to just remove the entire Greek alphabet at that point and re and replace it with an auxiliary list. So that, my friends, is why they were basically just removed the whole Greek al uh, alphabet uh, bit from the auxiliary list. But they did they did replace it with a new one, and th this is it right here. The auxiliary list is right here, and this it's and after a Wanda again yeah, after Wanda forms and, and there's another system and dissipates and there's another system. This is the list they're going to use right here. The names are Adria, Braylon, uh, Caridad, uh, Deshawn, Emery, Foster, Ga uh, Gama, Heath, Isla, Jacobus, Kinsey, Luco, Michaela, Nolan, Orlanda, Pax, Ronan, Sophie, Tayshon, uh, uh, Vivian, and Will. So they did replace that with another tw uh, 21 uh, name auxiliary list. So, yeah, we're not using the Greek alphabet anymore for that, uh, for that particular reason. They're not using the Greek alphabet again because they literally had to retire two of the names in the Greek uh, Greek alphabet. That sh that shows you how intense Ada and Iota were. And once again, they literally made landfall in the ex in pretty much the exact same spot, and. Ada caused mo most of the damage of this, even though it was a little weaker in made landfall. And then Iota came ashore, just basically destroyed everything that was left. Like, yeah, and the damage, like, Ada did cost six times more uh, than Iota did. The reason that was, like I said just, just a few minutes ago, was because by the time Iota made landfall, there was literally nothing left. Ada literally destroyed huge amounts of air, uh, of huge areas with its ridiculous storm surge with extreme winds extreme rainfall it literally stalled over central america generate tons of rainfall and by the time iota made landfall it may have been record breaking but it, it but there was nothing left for it to destroy and yeah for and when ada made landfall it killed 172 pe uh, 75 people iota it, iota killed 84 and it's for the exact same reason. There was nobody left. There was essentially nobody left at that point. There were people there to to rebuild, but these two hurricanes caused a humanitarian crisis. And because of these hurricanes, a lot of people started migrating towards uh, to Mexico and later the United States. And yeah, my heart's thoughts and prayer. My heart thoughts and prayers are to everyone. And I'm and, I'm, and if you're listening to this and you were affected by these two hurricanes. I am very sorry that you had to go through this, and I hope you never have to go through something like this again. So yeah, this is the, exactly the reason why uh, the, they're no longer using the Greek alphabet. This is why the auxiliary list has been changed. They began using, they only used the auxiliary list twice, the Greek alphabet auxiliary list twice. First time was in 2005 uh, in the hyperactive Atlantic hurricane season, the, se the year Hurricanes like Katrina, Rita, Wilma, uh, and essentially were hit the hit the basically you know, were in the front page of the newspaper, and in 2020 just absolutely shattered that. And our strongest hurricane, uh, our strongest hurricane of the season was actually in the Greek alphabet. So yeah, they just so yeah, the National Hurricane Center decided to remove the Greek alphabet from their naming list. So. Yeah, they're now replacing it with a new auxiliary list. Which, if that is uh, which if that is used, that'll be the first time they actually go back uh, to the uh, to, uh, use a brand new list of uh, brand new names like this. Because before they used the Greek alphabet, which had twelve, uh, which had twelve names to it and everything. But now they can't really do that anymore because Iota and Ada caused so much uh, caused so much destruction that they had to be retired, and they decided to just abolish it uh, completely. So yeah, this is all for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you were. I hope I educated you guys a little bit more on why they don't are not using the Greek alphabet anymore and what the auxiliary list is. 
So I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications for more updates on hurricanes like Sam right now, as well as more videos like these. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, be sure to hit, uh, like, uh, comment, subscribe, turn on notifications for more videos like this. It's much appreciated here. Helps me get more videos out like this. And I'll see you guys next time.